if you could just keep it in the frame. I'm going to tell you about me, okay? When I was in second grade, I figured out that the kids at school like Tootsie Pops. So I rode my bike down to the Winco Pharmacy, and I talked to the manager, and he gave me like a special price if I bought like a whole case of them, and I took them to school and started hustling. And I think that was the first thing I ever sold. And I don't know, I got off on it, I, you know what I mean? It got me like, wow, you know, these kids are buying stuff for me. And I think, like, maybe a little later on, um, I decided I need to make some money. It's a true story. They showed this film in school about this little kid, inner city kid, wanted to buy a turtle. He needed a dollar. He went down to the supermarket, and you guys aren't old enough to remember this, but your teachers are. Back in the day, you couldn't take your shopping carts into, into the parking lot. Okay? You take your shopping cart, and you had to like, leave it by the curb, and then you had to go get your car. And you bring a car over and then you had to load up your stuff, which is a real hassle. So I had this brilliant idea, because this little kid who wanted to get the turtle had the same idea, was you stand there on a Saturday at the supermarket and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, can I carry your bags to your car? She would do it, she'd give you 15 cents or whatever, you know. By the time the day was over, you had 10 or 15 bucks to go blow on candy or whatever. So there was a kid at the supermarket, so here I am making 15 bucks, and this dude at the supermarket selling soft pretzels, making like 100 bucks. Well, he went on spring break, and I like moved right into his territory while he was gone. Which was awesome until he got back from spring break. It turned out his parents owned the soft pretzel company. So I was banned from buying soft pretzels. And um, so, anyway, um, all through high school, I sold all kinds of things, nothing too illegal. Um, I went to boarding school in eighth grade. I know it's hard to believe. I told her I wasn't going to say it, but I'll say it. You could smoke cigarettes in your dorm room in my boarding school. Kids were too lazy to go get cigarettes. I would buy cigarettes. I would bike them back to school, sell them for double the money. Kids were smoking other things and getting hungry at night. Saw that as an opportunity, so I sold pop tarts. Um, I, I was always like an opportunist to sign stuff. Um, so anyway, made it through boarding school. Um, graduated went to Drexel. Okay, Drexel, does anyone know what Drexel's known for? Engineering. For engineering, but, but the kind of program? It's called co-op, okay? Drexel's a co-op program. So um, I went to a five-year co-op program, and um, we all need money when we're in college, right? Okay, so my neighbor, Mr. Greenfield, who was paying me five bucks an hour to clean around his house and pull weeds and send me up on his roof to clean his gutters, and I, I'm not kidding you, you know like the cartoons where the light bulb goes off? I'm on this dude's roof, and this light bulb went off. And I'm like, this dude's paying me five bucks an hour to clean his gutters. I look around the whole neighborhood, there's about a thousand houses. I'm like, everyone needs their gutters cleaned. Within, I would say, eight months, my friend and I, we had 200 houses. We were cleaning gutters for, making a thousand a weekend. Um, it was like ridiculous. All through college, saved my money. Then I had to get a co-op <coughs> job. My first co-op job, they basically whore you out to accounting companies, paying you five bucks an hour. Accounting company goes, yeah, 20 bucks an hour, they make money, you get experience. Public accounting was not for me. So, came back to scuba dive. So when I was in high school, I got certified to scuba dive in 1981. That's probably before most of y'all were born, I would imagine, right? And um, all I want to do is go scuba dive. So when I worked at the dive shop, I met this guy named Jack. And all I knew about Jack was he was like really rich, and he had a factor. So for my second co-op, I went and I asked Jack, hey, dude, can I get a job um, for you? So can you click over to the next slide? OK. So I go to work for this guy in North Philly. And um, I mean, I was 20. I was like your guy's age. And um, he ha had this big metal fabrication company. And he had just got this new product from somebody else called the Mountable Truck Rock. So let me just tell you about what this is, OK? So everyone knows a tractor trailer is, right? The tractor attached to trailer, driving around, right? OK, get some Sorry. food here. Get some food. Right now? Uh, yeah, right now. OK. <laughs> Sorry, the bike traffic. It's OK. All right, Thanks. so this guy, Jack, had this system. It made like a regular delivery size truck into a tractor trailer. Now, that might not mean a lot to you guys, but the problem is that when you have a delivery truck, 
you can't load or unload the truck because the truck's not there because it's out delivering. So they had the system where these boxes were interchangeable, like pods. You guys see pods? It's sort of like pods. So I'm like thinking, wow, this is a great idea. I can sell this. So my boss at the time and I, we really hit it off. My boss was about 25 years older than me. His name was Frank. And uh, we worked for this guy. And I mean, I worked my ass off. And I was making in 19... In, um, like 1986, I was making almost 400 a week selling these things in college. Now, that's 400 a week, like pretty good now, right? Okay? Well, then it was like a really lot. So we worked for this guy, and we worked for this guy, and the guy was like, oh, we're going to be, we're going to all be partners, and we're going to do this, and this, that. Well, this guy decided he wanted to do cocaine more than he wanted to, like, be partners, and we saw the writing on the wall, and we were like, you know what? Screw you. We're going to go on business for ourselves. How smart we are, okay? You got me. I'm going to graduate in, in June. I took all these classes, graduate in March. And my partner, and this is no lie, who was 25 years older than me, didn't graduate eighth grade, and was making like 65,000 bucks a year in that, back in that year. And he quit, and I quit, and we said we're going to go on business for ourselves. So, that's me. <laughs> this is a four all marketing, three, three, eight, seven, five overall. And this is me about probably two months after I graduated college, okay? Um, but we had a really awesome office. Next slide. My first office. Very impressive. Um, but what we did was we worked our asses off. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you guys a whole piece of paper. And I wrote down, I don't know, 10 or 12 things that I wish that I knew when I was your age. And you can, like, text your friends or check your Facebook now if you want, or you can listen to these things at the end of the lecture. These things will change your life. Um, I'm not bullshitting you, because you want to know something? This will be my 25th year in business this year. And I took 30 days off this summer. Guess what to go do? Exactly. Okay? On... Guess who's boat? Yours. Exactly. And guess who's shore house? Yours. Okay? Because that's what I wanted 25 years ago. Okay? And I would have got there a lot faster had I known all these things that I'm going to share with you later today. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through my life, tell you a few stories, and then we can ask questions and stuff like that. Okay. So this is in Westville. Go back. Just keep skip ahead. So... We, um, we got a job from some dude, and we didn't even have anywhere to go. I knew this building was available. We drove by, and the landlord took pity on us. He let us move in. He let us, you know, give us a break on rent for a few months. Okay, so getting back to these demountable truck buys. We were the only person in the United States who was making these demountable truck buys. We went and started this company. Honestly, my grandfather gave me, like, five grand. I think my dad gave me five grand. Um, some dude who, like, I knew from growing up. I mean, literally, like... Probably less than 20 grand we started this company with. So, now this is way before the inner. Yes? <coughs> if you were the only one making it, you have to guys you were working for, aren't you making the same product? Yeah, well, he, was, he went out of business because he was doing too much coke. And it was too important for him to get high and concentrate on his business. Not to mention that we were his team. Remember? Yeah. I want you guys to think about this. We were his team members, but he wasn't our team member. Okay? You with me? Was there some sort of technology, though, that you were no. potentially stealing? Or nope. No up? patent. There was no, and you know what's funny? You should say that. Because when we quit, we thought this, this dude would sue you if you, like, uh, dropped a, something on his carpet. You know what I mean? And that's, we were so afraid. And I'm going to tell you something. Get a good lawyer when you go in business. Because then you won't waste all this energy worrying that some dude's going to sue you. Okay? Because he never did. And he could, there was nothing for him to do. The guy, my partner, had brought the technology to his place when he was an employee. But that's a really good question. So, here we are. My partner had been doing this product for 18 years prior to me even meeting him. So basically, he worked for someone. He went out of business. He went to work for my friend. I met him and my friend. So this guy had the, had the know how. But me, being your age, because you know we're all smarter than everyone 25 years older than us, right? I'm like going to go say, oh, what can I find that's better? Okay, you can change the slide. So, you know how, like, in college, they still sell, try to hustle you guys' credit cards? 
If they do that, a Drexel outside the library, they're always trying to get you to buy a credit card, right? Well, I got like 10 credit cards when I was in, in college. And I didn't use them, but I had the credit just in case maybe I needed it. So I found a company in England that did what we did. I took my credit card and I bought two airplane tickets. We flew to Heathrow. We took a train to Peterborough. And we met, went and met that English guy with the umbrella on his head. And this guy had a company that was literally like 25 years ahead of us. It was like we went and we were able to look at a crystal ball and see our future, see what we wanted to be. Very important to get out there and see what you want to be. Okay? Didn't realize it at the time, but that's what had happened. Okay, so go to England.